JavaScript now supports public and private class fields uh, and methods. Methods have been there for a while as public methods, but we never had private methods. And we never really had class fields. I mean, we kind of did. You could set properties on your class, um, and they, but they couldn't be private. Now we have really just like TypeScript, where you can set um, fields in your class, and you can have private and public fields and methods. But the syntax is a little different from TypeScript. So let's take a look uh, at what it looks like in vanilla JavaScript. I should also say there's a small asterisk by uh, fully supported. This is a stage three proposal. That's not part of the official spec yet, but it is supported by all modern browsers already. So it's something that you could write today in modern browsers and something that being in stage three is most likely to be part of the spec fairly soon. So let's take a look at what this looks like in vanilla JavaScript. We still have our same class syntax. We're gonna make a fancy logger that puts emojis on each side of our logged message, okay? We can come with a message and if we wanna make our message private, we use the hash symbol. If you're an older school JavaScript developer, you might've seen people try to make their properties or variables in general, I should say, private by putting an underscore in front of it, which of course doesn't make it private, but this was a convention in old school JavaScript. That is not what is being used. Um, hashtag here is being used. And now message is a private property of um, this class. Um, you can also now have public uh, fields in your class. And I'm actually going to, like I would in TypeScript, keep my public uh, fields above. And I'm going to grab an emoji over here. That's a string. A little coding emoji here. That's our decorator, and we're, we're leaving that as a public field so that you, the user of this logger, can change the emoji to whatever you want. Uh, we could also, of course, do that via getters and setters, um, but in this case, to show off the fact that uh, you can have both public and private fields, I'm gonna do one of each. So we have our public field, decorator, and our private field, message really just the same way you could do in TypeScript, except for instead of the keyword private, you have a hash in front. So let's create some getters and setters. You can also make private getters and setters. So to show that off, I'm gonna create some for our message. So we're gonna say set decorated message. Now, um, message, becomes, or uh, that the hash is part of the, the field name. So when I'm accessing it here, you can see in VS Code that uh, the hash is part of the property. There it is. So I assign it like so. Get, now keep in mind, because I'm putting the hash in front of this, these getters and setters, these are actually private getters and setters. They're private methods that cannot be accessed outside this class just like message cannot be accessed outside of this class. So I'm gonna set get decorated message, and that's gonna return decorator. Oops, message, decorator. So it's just gonna wrap whatever we want to log with two emojis. And those are private getters and setters. And those private getters and setters are gonna be called by our public method, which is simply log. Now, because these are getters and setters and private, the, the same syntax applies. To access something private, you still have to keep the hash in front. And of course, you can only do it inside the class. But now we can say this dot decorated message equals message. 
And then we can say console.log this.decorated message. That's going to call our getters and setters. This calls our private setter, which sets our message. And then this calls our private getter, which takes that message, wraps it in whatever decorator we have, and then logs it to the console. So now I can use this class like any other. However, uh, if I try to access this private field here, which is message, I get an error. Now this error message, in my opinion, isn't maybe the greatest. It says private field message must be cleared in an enclosing class, which is true. Um, but I'm not sure that that, you know, really explains what's going on. The reality is it's just, as far as an outside uh, user of a class, that field doesn't exist. So message, even though it's here, cannot be accessed outside of the class. But let's look at decorator, which is just a regular field. And you can see that my emoji I'll zoom in a little more on this. You can see that my emoji has been logged to the console. So message, I was not able to log to the console. I did not have access to it, but decorator, I was. So this now lets me control private versus public, just like I could in TypeScript but with a slightly different syntax. Okay, and let's test out our actual method here. And let's do a fancy log dot log. Public and private class fields work. I'm just gonna shrink that a little bit so you can see how it wraps. So that's, that's it, those things work. Now the other thing that I, I think is cool and pretty smart about this convention compared to TypeScript where you just have the private keyword is that the, it, it lets you avoid naming conflicts when creating getters and setters. So in the world of TypeScript, if I had the word private here and then I wanted to create a getter for it, um, then I have a problem. Because if I want to call it get decorator, um, I can't. There's, there's a conflict here between these two names. And in fact, it's still kind of true if you're doing private getters and setters, right? Like we did here. You can't create simply private getters and setters called just message because you have the same naming conflict. Um, but when you're doing public getters and setters, because the hash is part of the name, you can just make your getters and setters just get decorator and then we return this dot decorator and set decorator new decorator so now we have our own cool uh, getters and setters that are just named the regular variable name and then our uh, private field is prefixed by the hash. And then that means that we can still, just like we could have when this was simply public, but we can now say this.decorator equals, then I'll grab another emoji. In fact, I'm gonna do like two emojis. Emoji wild. All right, we're gonna save that. That should update my decorator. And now my decorator is set. So I was able to create getters and setters uh, without naming conflicts because the hash is part of the name of the private field. That's it. Uh, this is just a new feature of JavaScript. Again, it is, it is only in stage three 
Um, it is not 100% um, approved and part of the spec, but it is a stage three proposal. And if you come down here, you can see that it is supported effectively by all major browsers, I guess, other than Safari. And Internet Explorer, I mean, is, is no longer active, so that's to be expected. But everything else already supports it. So this is something uh, you could use in modern browsers, but of course you could always just set up Babel or some other transpiler uh, if you need backwards compatibility. That's it. Just wanted to do a quick video on this uh, cool and really nice new feature of JavaScript. Thanks for watching.